Lenny Bruce comes up often in comedy conversations because people confuse the state of modern stand-up comedy with the way things were 60 years ago. It's a bonkers take to suggest that things now are the same as they were five years ago, let alone 60, but here we are. I want to talk about who Lenny Bruce was, what he was struggling against, and why modern comedians taking shots at trans people, gays, and women are not in the same league. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'm Jim Hodgson. This is Comedy Zola. If you'd like to support the channel, I'd love to have you on Patreon. I'm working on building that out more, so if there's something that you'd like to see, please let me know. And Lenny Bruce, foremost exponent of uh, sick humor and... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, the champagne is really making my nose bubbly, Uncle <laughs> Lenny Bruce was a comedian whose career spanned an unfortunately short amount of time. He started getting noticed for his work in the early 1950s. By 1966, he had passed away from an overdose. He was just 40 years old. In his early career, it is said that he was blacklisted from television appearances, but eventually his overwhelming popularity, especially with people who could pull strings in TV, like Steve Allen, got him onto TV a few times anyway. You can see how that experience could shape a person's mentality. You know, if the suits on TV are telling you that you're too vulgar for the public, but you know for a fact that every time you're in front of a live audience, people can't get enough, then you must be thinking in the back of your mind that any authority figure telling me I'm on the wrong track is just fundamentally incorrect. Though he got some attention from the cops in the early 50s over his money-making and priest robe-stealing schemes, he really started to run afoul of the law on obscenity charges starting in 1961. You can see how he might have been in an impossible situation. He had to please the crowds or his source of income would dry up. Well, he knew how to please crowds, just keep saying the stuff he always had and ignore anyone who says it's obscene. I don't know whether his drug issues were a major factor at this point in the early 60s, as much as they were closer to the end of his life, but if they were already a problem, that could have added some additional financial incentives to keep working, no matter the cost. At the time, there were laws about how decent a person should be in public, and there still are. In some states, strippers can get bare ass naked. In others, it's pasties and G-strings, etc. You can't go to a comedy club and get naked on stage. I mean, you probably can, but if somebody calls the cops, it could turn into a problem. In the early 60s, though, you also couldn't say certain words in a public setting because saying them was deemed to be obscene. You can see how a local law enforcement office would view this situation as low-hanging fruit. They arrest someone who probably isn't going to run or put up a fight. They look good to the community because they're protecting local decency. Nobody gets hurt. But Lenny Bruce might not have been able to back down either. He'd built a career on challenging what could and couldn't be said on stage, and despite everyone telling him it was indecent that he couldn't go on TV and so on, he eventually did go on TV. He continued getting booked. Crowds loved him more and more. The cops probably understood that part too, and it probably galled them. You know, maybe this guy's gonna say stuff in some other town, but not around here. Lenny's probably thinking, yeah, they're making noise about obscenity, but they won't really do anything. I mean, there's no victim here. People leave my shows laughing their asses off. What's the harm? In multiple cities, the cops and Lenny Bruce clashed time and again. He was arrested repeatedly and continued to perform as soon as he got out. Bruce was eventually convicted and he was sentenced, but he was released on bail during his appeal. He died while appealing the verdict, which was later stricken from the record. Lenny Bruce was pardoned posthumously in 2003. Modern comedians and comedy fans compare themselves or their favorite artists to Lenny Bruce because Lenny Bruce performed what he considered his art to be and did not stop when threatened by the state or when blacklisted by clubs who feared legal problems. His case, in my view, understanding that I'm not a lawyer, is a clear example of a First Amendment issue because the people trying to tell him what to say were officers of the law. But there were probably also people in Lenny Bruce's life who thought he was an asshole for the things that he said. They probably didn't go to his shows. Maybe they even protested his shows. Lenny Bruce would not be protected from any of that by the First Amendment because those people are acting as regular people, not officers of the state. It's perfectly legal to experience backlash from people who think you're being an asshole, as long as they express that view in legal ways. The First Amendment today in the US, thanks in no small part to Lenny Bruce and his story, is pretty well known and very well defended. It would be extremely hard, maybe even impossible, to get arrested merely for saying stuff on stage today. If you're going out on stage and performing sex acts or something, maybe you could get arrested in some states? 
But what is still possible is to say stuff that makes you sound like an asshole and thereafter to be treated like an asshole by people who have heard you say it. While media in Lenny Bruce's day was controlled by gatekeepers and decency was enforced by the state, most of that is now gone. Media is not gatekept anymore. It just chooses to work with whomever has risen up through the algorithm on social media. And since the algorithm favors engagement, artists are incentivized to push what they perceive to be boundaries. Instead of catching a charge though, like Lenny Bruce, they get likes faves, money, and Netflix specials. You see how those things are different? Lenny Bruce got arrested. Modern so-called provocateurs get millions of dollars. No matter how big an asshole you are, the most you're likely to experience is being deplatformed by certain tech companies. And that will only happen if corporations decide they don't want to run their ads around whatever you are saying. If you don't mind talking with no sponsors on limited or hands-off medias like podcasts, you can say whatever you want as long as you want. In short, it is impossible to really be like Lenny Bruce in the US at this moment in time. If that's your goal, you need to move to a country that is controlled by an authoritarian regime. Alexei Navalny and Jamal Khashoggi are two people who would have benefited from US First Amendment protections. I don't think the people claiming Lenny Bruce want any part of what those men experienced. I sure as hell don't. The United States experiment in democracy might come to an end over the next few years. If it does, there will be plenty of opportunities for Lenny Bruce type pushing of boundaries in the years to come. But to claim that you are like Lenny Bruce today or that any modern comedian is like him in the current climate is absurd. I'll take it over again. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe and maybe jump on the Patreon if you want to help me make more. And if you want to talk about comedy writing with people who are trying to do it in a constructive way, we also have a Discord channel.